Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can you hear me now? Okay, it, all right, it, okay. It will be an easy win. Just need to learn like a Delora routine. Okay, one second. Let me just turn the volume down one second. Just give me one second. Okay. Okay, all right. So basically what I, what I want to do is I just want to show you a couple of the gambits because I think you were saying something about how you want to be playing gambits in this tournament, right? Uh, I mean, I like gambits at, as white. Oh, sorry, not as white, as black. Uh, I, I like it more. As white, you could play on your on your first move advantage, I feel like, and play normal. But okay. as black, I feel like you are behind, um, that you need to play a little bit, you know, riskier. Right, so so that, that makes some sense. Actually, um, so that, that's why what I want to do is I want to just help you out with some of the black gambits. So you can actually, you can make moves on this board as well. So so I, I wanted to focus on two gambits in particular, because I think you're playing both of them. Um, which is you're you're playing the uh, the Latvian I think against E4 right? Yeah, one against E4, one against E4. I have one for each. Latvian right. is the the E4, yeah. Okay, so let's start with the D4 gambit, okay? Because because this one I think is a it's this one's a little bit less complicated, more straightforward in terms of uh, in in terms of how how you how you play this. So okay, so D4 knight F6, they push this pawn, right? Normally they try to take space in the center of the board here. And so now you push this pawn forward. Uh, yeah, I have a question. What mm -hmm. if they don't do that pawn C4? So for ex okay, so there are a couple of moves that White can play here. C4 is the main move. They can also move the knight or move the bishop out. So what I would recommend is if they move this bishop out, White has a very simple idea. He wants to push this pawn next move. So let's just say you play some random developing move. They push this pawn. Um, the bishop is outside of these pawns, so it's not on its original square, so it has all these targets. And then they want to develop the bishop like just normal normal moves, and you end up in a normal position, kind of, just a, just a regular chess oh, game. Oh, so, then, so then, then you don't do the gambit. It's only if they do the, the actual best move they can make, which is the, the double pawn on the side. Well, actually, what I'm going to recommend is that you, you don't necessarily have to play a gambit, but I want you to be aggressive against it because it, it seems to fit your style more to be aggressive than to just play normal kind of slow positions. So what I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you to play is not necessarily a gambit per se, but it's to be very active here, which is to push this pawn forward. So now you're attacking this pawn um, on this D4, D4 point. And, if, uh, and you want some sort of like queen take back if he takes it. Right. So like, like for example, bait. if white moves this knight out, you would capture the pawn. And if white captures with this knight here, you have a, you have a really beautiful tactic here, which is that you push this pawn forward. And that, or actually, by the way, apparently in your stream, they can't hear me. So I, I, I don't know, maybe... Maybe you muted uh, me. Yeah, I had this issue before. I forgot how I how I solved it. Uh, Chad, how did I solve this when I had this before? Uh, all right. Uh, try now. Okay. So... So 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 as, as I was mentioning, um, I, I don't know if they 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 can hear me or not. Uh... Yeah, I'm sure, I'm unsure because okay. they troll so fucking much. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, okay, we can keep going on then. So. Okay, someone said fix. So I I think I think now now it's good. Yeah, right. it's fixed. Okay, they, they can hear me. All right. So, so why, why is that a good play? So oh, you see, you're attacking play. this bishop and this knight here with the one pawn. So this is a fork. Yeah, but nothing so, to back it up. Right. So, so if white, I mean, if white moves the bishop somewhere, you take the knight. Or if he moves the knight, you take the take the bishop. So uh, why don't why don't you just take the pawn? With right. The, with the yeah. Thing? So you were I saw you watching you were watching a video earlier um, on this. Uh, I think this opening was called the grob opening, and there was a way to attack with the queen. So I'm curious if you see the move here. There's a way to to win this bishop, actually. Yeah. Okay. So oh yeah, you 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 check with the queen yeah, on the side. And right. You, you, you can make the moves actually. Right. So you you also have access. You can make the moves too. And yeah. So you, basically, you you win this bishop now. So you win a bishop for a pawn, which is very very good. 
Uh, yeah, actually, I uh, didn't see that. I mean, I saw I saw it on the pawn before. If you were to take, mm -hmm. you can't move backwards now. But the you, pawn you mean you mean, you mean here? Side. Which one? Uh, just hit, just use two. the backwards and forward forwards arrows if if you're wondering about the position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I for some reason I can't take. Uh, I can't take. It. Oh, it's it's White's turn. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right, so so when white takes the pawn exactly, you can make this check, and what happens is when white when white say blocks with a knight, you capture this pawn. If white pushes a pawn forward, like in the center here, you can now yeah. push this pawn to control the center square, so that white white, white would really like to attack your knight, because when you have this knight on this the central square, white would like to remove the knight so that white's knight will control the critical squares. So, yeah. so the way you do this is you would push the pawn to prevent this pawn push. And now you can activate your bishop next move. So you'll bring the bishop out and bring the knight out. And then eventually you push one of these two pawns, move the bishop, and get the king out of the center of the board. Does that make some sense? It does make sense. That does make sense. Uh, but this, this all derives from... Uh... When they don't play optimally, right? When they don't t uh, play the C C four pawn, right? Um. Yeah. I mean, I I guess what I would say is that there actually are, are strong chess players who do this because it's a very simple system. White White really just wants to develop the the bishop, like bishop the pawn, the bishop and the knight. So there probably will be somebody in the tournament who does this. I I I, I don't know specifically of anyone who will play this, but I think somebody will probably play this setup against you. Is my guess. All right. So it, it's, uh, it's not necessarily like optimal per se, but the thing is when they play like this, you try to attack right away. And if they, if they don't like take this pawn, like they try to keep the same setup, like just to develop the bishop and the knight here, you can move your queen out. And now, now you see you're attacking both of these points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, it, it looks kind of like what if they just push the pawn instead when you when you play and mm -hmm. they push these d4 pawn forward they have the queen to back it up and you cannot lock in your 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 center pawns right kind of exactly like a... but there's one drawback here which is the white has moved the bishop out very early so it's a very simple it's the same theme you bring your queen out and again you attack this pawn because white brought the bishop out too early oh, okay yeah that makes sense and the only uh... way white can like white can't move move the queen to protect the pawn because then you just capture this one. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I don't see a single way you can actually protect it without losing your pawn. Right. So, for, right, so I think right. white can push the pawn, but if white pushes the pawn, just just very quickly, you can like make a check here, attack the bishop and the king. If white blocks with the queen, you just trade the queen. White captures, and then you just win this pawn again. All right. So essentially, uh, if someone brings the bishop I'm... out, you want to push the pawn to use your queen on this square to attack like this, or to bring the queen all the way out to attack the king. Okay, okay. I, so, I get it. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask my mods uh, because they say they can't hear you again, but I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Um, I don't know. Can they can they hear me now? Uh, they say they say no. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I had this before, but I I, I don't right. remember how I fixed it. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. It's whatever. They they can they can have your stream open and hear me at the same time. I okay. Guess. So okay. All so right. this is if they develop the bishop. Um. So so now th this is the main move to to push this pawn. So now you push this pawn forward here. Yep. And so now. Okay, white, white can accept the gambit or decline the gambit, but if white declines the gambit, like white doesn't take the pawn, um, it's pretty straightforward here. You move this bishop out to attack on this, this line towards the king. 
uh -huh. and then when white let's just say white plays a normal move like this pawn push you castle your king white will develop let's say the bishop you push this pawn here because now uh there, there's this theme called bishop outside of the pawns so like when you look at your bishop on this dark square you see the you see these three pawns here yeah the bishop is outside of this uh the, this this basically pawn chain these these pawns are connected but the bishop is outside whereas in this position if you see this bishop on this this dark square for white it's behind the pawn like white would rather have the bishop outside of this pawn so that it, it could create attacking ideas so the bishop here on this dark square is very well placed and now you can actually bring your other bishop out like here and if white continues development like knight here what i would recommend is moving your knight up all right and if yeah, white castles so. the king just push this pawn and immediately put a lot of pressure here towards the white king all right all right uh this is all versus would you say that they need to know more what they're doing if they decline the gambit rather than take the gambit um probably they need to know more if they take the gambit because if they, they take the gambit and they make a mistake they can end up in a lot of trouble but they can they can they can always like just give the one material back right at one point if they feel unsure of what to do next right and then be like fine right so definitely this this taking taking the gambit is, is the correct move and i think most people will do this um but you you get you get your pieces developed very quickly again so you, when white takes the pawn you move the knight so you attack this pawn now if white moves the knight here you move your bishop out and you're attacking the pawn again with the knight and the bishop oh okay so i always thought you should you should move the horse out the second knight out right but th there's one trick here with when you give up this pawn right away which is that if you were to move this one white will move this bishop here and what happens is you end up in a situation where it's going to be very hard to win this pawn back because white's going to overprotect it with the bishop and the knight and the only real way All to right. try and win the pawn back would be to move your queen but white's then and going then to move you're the blocking your own bishop as well right. So that's right, why so you recommend first bishop then mm -hmm. and the reason is because when you move it. the bishop he pushes but then you go here and you see the bishop doesn't get to protect this pawn it's behind ah. the pawn now was that a bad was that a bad block that i did with the white pawn uh is it better to block with something else like it's, the it's actually the only block so if oh, we, it is so while you're threatening to win this pawn here the only way that white can stop that is either to push the pawn or try to move this knight here to stop you from winning but now you can actually win the game because you take this pawn. But wh why can't you move the bishop to to e3? Yeah, you can. So if you move the bishop here, what happens is then you would just take this. And there are many moves are good here, but I think very simply oh. you can just castle your king. And if white continues development, you move your rook. And then you move your knight and all these pawns are very very weak and you're going to win all the pawns. All right. And also this bishop here can't go anywhere it's behind it's behind all these pawns yeah that's true that's true that's gonna be hard yeah that's like a triple lane that's very awkward yeah it's, it's really really bad when you get the pawns like this yeah all right okay so yeah it's not very good so that, that's why what what they should play um is is when, when you go here and they push they have to push the pawn but you go here and now you attack this pawn twice and if they mm -hmm. move the bishop, let's just say here, you take this pawn, white castles, and then 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 black castles. And and the idea is pretty simple here. You want to push this pawn. So let's say knight c3, you push this pawn up, and now you move the rook over, and then you put this bishop probably to f5 or g4. And, and for example, let's say white plays, I don't know, move like bishop to d2. You bring the rook over, put it on this 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 open open file here where it's got uh, more space. Say so white develops, and now you can play a move like bishop here, uh, and then you can move your queen and move your rook or move your queen and then move your rook over to this square, and all your pieces are kind of right in the middle of the board here. Oh, yeah. So you're you're in a slightly better situation, right? Exactly. Yeah. So so this is kind of I think the the most important thing to remember um about this gambit is it basically just bring this bishop out early and then follow it up with the knight and win this pawn yeah and 
yeah, that's I mean that's really all you need to know follow that up and then push the pawn and always remember to bring the bishop out on this this diagonal all right it seems 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 good this one is pretty strong this one is better would you say I mean I know it's for two different things uh but this one is probably better than the Latvian gamble right um the Latvian gambit I think is actually a, a great choice and I think you, if your opponent doesn't know exactly what they're doing, you're much more likely to win. This one, you kind of get just a normal kind of position where you develop quickly. In the Latvian, if your opponent, if you're playing a grandmaster like a Smurf, yes, they'll be able to beat you, but that's only a grandmaster. At, at any any other level, I think it's a great opening choice. So okay, I actually so like it a lot. I have I have one for e e4 and one for d4. Anything else is kind of like suboptimal, right? So I. Sh I don't know if people would play that in the tournament. Yeah, so they like if they push this. this pawn forward, you can also push this one. You can still bring your knight out the same way as before. And now if white pushes the pawn, you would but, push but the pawn then, again. Then if he pushes that, isn't it better to just push push a center pawn instead? Uh, yeah, I mean you you can do this. It's a I, I guess yeah. I'll actually like, I'll, you, I'll tell you. You don't want to force uh, gambit too much, right? By just playing right. playing bad moves. So, when okay, I'll give you a basic value. setup of, 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 a, of a way to play. So, normally when you push this pawn, white will develop a knight. So, you'll develop a knight. White will develop a knight. You repeat. And now white can push one of these pawns. Let's just say white pushes this pawn to put the bishop on this diagonal. And now yeah. you put your bishop here. White develops. And now you push the pawn again. So, it's the same thing as before where you end up with these three pawns and your bishop is mm -hmm. outside. And now white castles, you castle. And it's the same thing where, again, you're going to move the bishop to one of these two squares, like g4, f5, and just move your queen and put your rooks in the center of the board. I have a question. Why do you castle uh, that early as white when you have no chance of getting attacked with your... Uh... Um, nor normally because it's if your king is in the center of the board, it's very hard to attack right away. So what, normally the king's safety is one of the most important principles in chess, which is just the king is much harder to be attacked when it's not in the center of the board. So you could try to fight for the center of the board immediately, like push this pawn um, and try, try to fight like with this. But immediately yeah. you're going to end up in trouble because I can take this pawn. Um, All right. And for example, I can go here. Let's just say white develops. And now you can make a check and attack the king. So, so very, uh, very early. If, uh, if I, you... I just feel like sometimes people castle when there's more to develop before to like get a get more control of the center before you you. Uh, right. So, castle. so yeah. that it depends on what they play. But when you when you push the pawn like this pawn specifically, you're at you're not trying to you're trying to get a very slow position. You're trying to get something where you do get the king out right away. When you do push, say the pawn in front of the queen or the pawn in front of the king, usually you do try to attack much more quickly. Especially when you push e4. Like, very oftentimes, white tries to attack immediately. Yeah, yeah I hear you. So, okay, I guess you want to take a quick look at this uh, at this Latvian a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so knight f3, you play f5 here. So now, if if white... Uh, let's let's start with this move, because this is, this is one move. If white moves this knight here... You Maybe capture eight. this pawn. And if white captures... This is one thing in general, since you're pushing the pawn really really early here, is always be aware of these ideas with like the queen check. Because without this pawn next to your king, this is always a big threat. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm aware of that one. I've fallen into that one uh, a few times. I like to move my... I, 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 get, I guess people don't really use... Uh, play c3 that often against me they either take or they take my pawn with the horse uh, right. with the knight right and right, then, so, I, then mm -hmm. I push out the queen uh to defend against it and then they have to move the 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 queen so when the queen is here then i'm pretty safe against this counter attack because i have this right exactly in general but but there is one difference so in this order the difference is that when white takes right away this is the correct move but when you've reached this position with takes, you actually develop your knight to stop the check first. And what happens is this knight is very bad because you just push this pawn up next move to remove the knight from the central square. Uh -huh. So if white moves uh, the bishop, yeah. you push the pawn, and now the knight has to go back, and now you push the pawn again. And let's say the knight comes back, now you push the pawn again. 
and you see what's happening like white's pieces are having to go backwards like the knight's gonna have to go back to like a square here and now you can bring the bishop yeah, that's awkward and you get like when white moves the knight you just castle the king and white's way behind in the development so that's why most people will not play this what they would play is they will take this pawn and so now you move the queen here this is very important by the way because if you take the pawn immediately then you run into the same problem again with this queen check yeah so you move the queen here to attack the knight normally white is going to push this pawn forward and now again you you can take this pawn but first you push this pawn to attack the knight and now the white knight has to move somewhere let's just say it goes back to this square now you would capture the pawn and the knight, knight kind of is moving all over the board every which way but you're, you're actually getting a much better position here because now you have pawns in the center you can bring the bishop bring the knight out get your king out and immediately you attack right away towards the white king oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I i tried to make the best play i mean i feel like i'm playing uh the latvian pretty well because i had the most time playing that one right but there it, are I... some variations where i'm like oh wait what do i do here like it's it's Mm -hmm. um, what I would say though you have to play the right couple of moves because when you're playing against the other top players in the event they will actually know at least a couple of the right. best moves let's uh let's let's let me play black and you play white and then you can tell me where I do where I go sure. wrong okay uh, how do we flip the oh oh um how do, how you're do still black it? right I'm black yeah yeah I'm just not used to playing black from this side I need to flip it oh, oh you want to flip it like this you mean Flip the board so I have black right. on my um, side. Yeah, there's on the right hand side, just as, uh, on the right hand side up near the top of the board, there is a flip board. Oh, yeah, okay, I see it. Thank you. All right, so I play this. Okay, I will play this. Mm hmm. Okay. So here I know what you said, and I'm trying to think, is that what I usually do? I'm trying to think. Probably um, not. You probably play the the obvious move, which is actually very bad. Uh, do you mean take? Yeah, so taking is the obvious move. but if I, you... I don't know. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if that's the move I did. I might have done something like this. And then if you take, <laughs> I take with the, the pawn and then. Right. But, but you're actually behind by one pawn already. You, you see, because you gave this pawn in the center. So so what you're supposed to play is to push this pawn. Oh, I'm, I'm blessed right, you, by the right. way. Yeah, Yeah. okay. I'll, well, I'll, 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 I'll make this play from now on if, if the horse goes there. Usually the horse moves away, but I think that your play is, is the optimal player, right? Where you yeah, this, this is actually pawn. well known. This is a very well-established opening. So when, when I say say it's the best move, like if you, if you, I've seen you look at some of the computer with the computer sometimes on the evaluation. And in this opening start of the game, the computer is not always right. Like the, these opening strategies have been established over the last like 100, 150 years. So, so the pushing this pawn is 100% the right move. No, no, I meant, I meant uh, your response, pr uh, protecting your knight with, with pawn. Yeah, the response I'm playing uh, are, are the opt. It's the optimal. Okay, response. okay, you're playing optimally. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Because right. if I if I move the knight, you'll see what happens is this knight gets attacked. And you get no, to I meant, put the pawn I, I in meant the center. move back uh, like another square, like on the right side. Of no, you the board. can you can make the move too. I, I you can make the move as well. Yeah, like here or mm -hmm. or or up even. Right. Like so if you else. go back here, then you take the pawn again. Yeah. And if white moves. Oh, okay. Let's. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I see. Let's continue your uh, sure. variation. I think it's better to learn from the optimal. Right. So now again, I will go here. And so again, remember you you gave up a pawn right away, but now you want to capture this pawn. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Because now the knight is out of the center of the board, so it's it's a it's an even trade. Am yeah. I up in this situation because I had two center pawns? Um, it's it's a, it's about the same. It, this is pretty close to 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 balanced. Uh, I think all both right. sides can play. So normally white will develop this knight here. 
Okay, but if you do this, I capture that, the pawn. I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm stupid. Yeah, okay. So uh, can, can you think of another way to protect this pawn here? I, I mean, I, this move is kind of hard to find. I mean, you could go with uh, the bishop. Right. But if you So if you move the bishop here, then white's going to move the knight and attack the queen and the pawn. So the correct move here right, is to move so... your queen over. Oh, okay, okay. Because now you protect I, I the probably pawn. wouldn't have seen that. Right, and the reason behind moving your queen here is that now, like, white can't easily get the king out of the center. So if I move the bishop, you just take this pawn. Yeah. So normally what, what white will play here is something like, um, there, there are a couple of moves. But let's just say white, white moves the knight here. And now you can push this pawn. White develops. And now you bring this knight out. White will castle. And now I think you can push this pawn here with the idea of moving the bishop and getting the king out of the, the middle middle part of the board. Why, why can't I push the bishop uh, and attack your knight, though? That's my... Well, the, the reason that you don't want to do that here is because when you, when you have pawns, like you've got these pawns in a row here, the bishop is much better than the knight. So when you no, look at the knight, it's not attacking way, way, way before uh, this scenario ever happened, when you had the double knights, uh, mm -hmm. like... Go ahead. Uh, here, you said to take the pawn. Why can't I do something like this? Oh, yeah, that doesn't work, actually. No, you push the pawn down. Right. right. Well, well, the reason for pushing the pawn is basically you want to um, you, you want to build this this these pawn this this pawn this this pawn chain, chain in the center. All right. So so that that's that's the main reason for doing it, and and then beyond that, again, once once you get the pawns like this, you really want to put the bishop here because it can it, it eyes the king and the pawn down this way. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I've been. That's. Uh, I haven't. I, I rarely see the the double knight coming out like the second knight coming out so fast uh but it's definitely the best response and then i have to move the queen to g6 right which is kind of you know it's a little bit weird but at the same time like it's it just remember it stop it protects the pawn but it also stops white from getting the king out of the middle of the board right away yeah if they make a mistake then you can capitalize on it pretty easily and then one other thing to add after you move this queen is white can also try to move this knight here yeah. To attack the pawn, because then this is a fork. You lose like everything basically. But now what you do is you move your queen back, and you attack the knight. But you also protect this this pawn. And, and what so, is their response then? Well, then white has and to go white. back. It, it's basically an attempt to cheese. Basically, that, that's what it is. White's trying to cheese and hope that Wait, you don't so, know the right. So move. what happens? What happens if white continues to go? Uh... If I move my, my, my queen back now to g6 to protect the pawn again. Right. Uh... So, yeah. So let, let, me, let me show you something. So think about when, when you look at the position at the start here after the knight comes, comes up. How would you optim, optimally you would like to protect this pawn with your knight probably, right? You'd like to put the knight here. Oh, so the... now you can put it the knight there when, okay, when you move the queen uh when he right. loses tempo you can put the knight there right. right because now in this position your queen's no longer on the dark square it's one square uh, yeah, yeah. and now you just bring the knight you move the bishop and castle the king again same thing or actually if white moves this knight though you have to be careful because white wants to put the bishop here to attack your queen with the knight and bishop but again you push this pawn forward to to make the pawn chain in the center of the board and then put the bishop behind it and get the king out of out of the center all right um yeah, actually, some good insight on this one. Uh, and this one, you're you going to you have gonna something. Get. Mm -hmm. Do you have something against uh, when you're playing white versus versus the French defense? Something that's aggressive. Okay, so against the French defense. Okay, so because that's what I'm struggling a little bit with when they play like so totally, you know, when they right, their so, pawns oh, are so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to recommend that you play then is uh, you bring the knight out. So that if black captures a pawn, you capture the pawn. And I'll give you a, a basic basic uh, sample line here. So black can bring this knight out to offer the exchange of the knights. And now you push put the bishop on this square, pinning the knight. So if black captures your knight, you win the queen. 
And if black uh -huh. moves the bishop here, you trade. You bring the knight out. Let's say black castles. Uh, you want to put this bishop. It's it's kind of the same thing, actually. You push this pawn to create the pawn chain. And the next move is going to be to put the bishop behind it to try to attack towards the king. If, uh -huh. if black, say, pushes a pawn here, here. Um, bring the queen into the center of the board. So basically everything is protected. And your next move is going to be to move your king uh, to the queen side to castle it here. So let's say black moves the knight. You castle the king. Um, and the way you're going to follow up here is your next move will be to push this pawn on the h file. And then move the knight up where it's supported by the pawn. And you really attack right away towards the black king. Uh-huh. Um, All right. I see. So th this is uh there there are, this is but one of the this moves. is just like uh like good solid center control is a good counter to french defense or what exactly because normally what black gives up by, by playing like this is you do try to control the center and black ends up with black has to move the pieces around a lot like maneuvering black doesn't get the open open space so white always has more space because the pawns are further up in the center for white than they are for black all right all right and I'll give you one other line here. So black can move this bishop here to attack your knight. And now you would push this pawn up, basically just to take more space in the center so black can't put this knight out on this dark square we'd like to. And if black moves the knight, you move the queen out. And you attack this pawn. If black castles, you do kind of the same thing. You bring the bishop to the square. And, and again, you're just trying to really develop very quickly and go after the black king here. All right, so you want to kind of castle on on the queen side versus it, right? Um, Eventually, kind or... of, yeah, yeah. I would say it, it depends what they do, but for the most part, you can castle. You can definitely castle to the to the queen side of the board. Yes. All right. So. Hmm. Is there no no hmm. place like that? I was thinking like if you know that someone for sure will do it in the tournament like they will for sure play french defense is there like something you can open that's not center pawn as white that was like super aggressive you know um like something that just completely screws it up assuming they blindly do it regardless of oh, okay okay you're saying yeah they, they just expect you to push the pawn um yeah not really i yeah, I can't really think of any way to punish it. It's it's actually a good first. It, it's a reasonable first move against any of the pawn pushes. Regardless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's yeah, but but I I think in general, most people are probably going to play e five. What what do you play against this one? Uh, against e e five, I play. Uh, what would I play? I need to flip the board once again. Uh, oh yeah. I... Mm hmm. I play, I, I play, uh, I try to get, um, okay. So you play this. Yeah. Develop I, quickly. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not afraid to use the, the fried liver attack or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. but I'm not forcing it. I'm just setting this up and castling. If I, if, if I get knight, like if he doesn't move his, uh, right. knight or something. Actually, the best move is to develop the Bishop. Um, if you, if you develop this knight here, then yeah, you can play knight to G five and you go for this whole, uh, this whole fried liver attack. Yeah. Um, but I actually want to show you one other gambit very quickly, which is if black puts the bishop out, just normal, normal. Um... Yeah, I know this one. Um, this is where you take the. Uh... Oh, do you mean from me or from you? For you, for you as white. Oh, okay. Now I was thinking about the one where he attacks my f2 pawn and checks me with the bishop if I go for the five liver. Mm hmm. Right, yeah, there's one where it's like a mirror, but but in this one, yeah. there's actually a move that you can play here, which is to play b4. Oh, yeah, I've done this, and they called it something. Some this gambit. is the uh, the Evans Gambit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens is black takes the pawn, and then you push this one up. And black has to move the bishop. Um, normally, they go back this way. If black goes back to the center, then, then you castle. The well, oh, actually, not the d3 you, pawn? Well, you castle first, because if you push this pawn... I mean, maybe you can push this pawn. Does it make a difference? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe you just push right away. They, they capture, make a check, and you block with the bishop. And immediately, you see all your pieces are developed very quickly. Yeah. So this is this is very, very good. Um, and that's why normally what they do is they go back this. Mm-hmm. 
No, I'm just saying. Uh, so, so normally the they gambit, go back this way. Yeah. Because now when you push the pawn, if they take, you can't capture because your king's in check. Okay. But again, you follow the same kind of rules. You, you castle your king. Um, normally they will say, bring this... Uh... Wait, actually, do you castle? No, wait, sorry. Um, yeah, you, you, you can castle here. They, they bring this knight out, and now you push this pawn up here. And again, you get this very big central central pawn mass. And because Black took this pawn and wasted all these moves with the bishop, you, you basically just develop very, very quickly here. Um, and you bring the bishop and you bring the knight out immediately. All right. And um, this is, is this, is this a good gambit? Is this hard to to play correctly as Black versus this? Yeah, it's, I feel it's, like it's, it's quite hard. Easy. It is? It's it's quite tricky, yeah. Um, so also on bishop a5, I'll get, there's another move here that you can play as well, which is you can move the queen to b3 first to attack this pawn. Yeah. And black has to defend it usually like with the queen, and then you um, and then again you can play d4 d4 right away. And if black takes, you can just castle. And this is again very very hard for black to play because the pieces aren't developed. So, oh, and then you threatening a pin. I see. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so Later. let's say Black brings a knight out here. What you can play? I think there are a couple moves that are good here. But for example, you can just push this pawn up to attack the knight. And if Black takes takes this pawn, um, I think. Can... Actually, wait. Wrong order. Sorry. What What you can do here, I think, is you can play. Which Which one was right? Okay. I think you can play Bishop here first. This, and then you can push this pawn up and when black captures you can just capture back and they can't capture the pawn because the queen is under attack and if they take here i think i think you can even just take this pawn followed by a check on f7 or take this pawn on f7 right away and it's very very good for white so what you do right. is because you gave up a pawn you gave up one pawn um the the advantage of that is that your opponent's wasting all these moves that he doesn't want to play normally so, so for that reason, I think this is also a good gambit to play um, with, with white against. It's a good backup for the for for bishop uh, to c5. Right, and if they bring the knight out, then again you just move this knight up and you attack. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is if they play if if black plays anything non-standard like even a pawn push, uh, you almost always want to take the center immediately if you can like this. And if, oh, if you, so you can do push, this, you push. Yeah, okay. You push like that versus the French defense. Yeah, right. And and even no. even versus this, same thing. Ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So. But usually, it's almost uh, almost always in this position. Uh, you see c six. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, c six. No. Yeah, you almost always see the knight move. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And again, even after this, if they play something else like this move, you do the same thing. You just you push this pawn up in the center again. All right, yeah. And it should should be pretty uh, pretty straightforward from there, because again, you want to develop the knight, get the king out, and and use this bishop or use this knight. Someone asked me uh, asked me about Danish gambit. What yeah, Danish you can play gambit? the Danish gambit as well. Um, that would be uh, that would be. That would be this one actually. So you push the pawn, black takes, and you push this one. Um, but this one's not not as good because your opponent can play this pawn move immediately, giving back the pawn, and you don't really get an attack. You're meant to bait him to take more stuff, or right. What, so you, you want him to take, and that now you put the bishop here, and it's it's kind of a similar similar point that you get all these attacks very quickly. Um, oh, and it yeah, takes again, and then you take your uh, right. Yeah. Okay. And now, now you end up with like really good pieces again, and you can bring the knight and bring the queen, and everything is really going to get attacked very quickly. Because yeah, you, you have nothing outside, yeah. Right, because you end up with two bishops developed before everything else. You give up a bunch of pawns, but it's uh, but it's it's really bad. You can't pl if you want to play it though. You can't. You definitely can play it. It's 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 not. Right. It's not uh, it's, it seems a little bit like like a noob stumper to me. Like, right, uh, I, I would think hoping. against. I don't, I don't know what everybody else plays, but I would think against some of the the higher higher ranked players, it's it's probably better just play like just play normal stuff because they they probably yeah. this stuff is a little bit dubious if they know what they're doing. So, so yeah, I would I would stick to more 
more more with white play like this with black though i love the i love the ideas though to be play the gambits all right yeah uh so latvian and budapest gambo one against each right. uh e4 and d4 that's good mm -hmm. and white i just play standard and use my first move advantage Seems like a good plan going into the tournament. Yeah, yeah, and I think also once once you, once you play it, you'll see what the other what the other guys are doing too. So it'll be easier to to figure figure out. Because I think some people will probably be playing exactly what what we just looked at. Yeah, uh, it's everyone. It's round robin, right? So everyone plays everyone. Right, in the, in the I, I, and you are the best player in in the group that you're in. So shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. I, I think the key is one. Is, is in the is in the bracket because the first first match is the individual game so that's that's gonna be the critical one all right but, yeah no I, I, you're, you're you're very good though and um you're definitely one of the best players in the event so i'm looking forward to seeing you uh oh shit how good is good uh player. so who are the other good players uh my chat said boy boy yeah i think boy 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 box box and maybe hutch are the other three players who are probably around the same level um but i don't wait who who is box box again he Chad? is uh he's I, a I, league I... of legends league of legends guy oh, league of Legends. yeah wait what uh so oh yeah what what rating um uh are they on on this side chess.com so on this side i think the ratings are a little bit a little bit lower so like i think if if you're like um so i think void boy for a comparison since he actually has played on lead chess he i think is around like 1700 um, on chess on this no side? no on, chess? on lee chess just because you've been playing oh, okay. on lee chess just to give a comparison right, right. um i the the best player on this site that i've seen since since boy boy plays on lee chess is uh is box box he's about i think like 1390 on this site i think lee chess is about 200 points or 150 points above chess.com oh all right all but right. i don't know i'm not sure it, for everyone it's a little bit different so you might you might be like 1500 or 1600 on this site too it's better to play on this this site then so that you get a, probably get a better and... comparison yeah, yeah. But... all right all right right sweet uh thank you for the help uh, it's about yeah. time i end the stream yeah no problem out. hope you enjoyed it yeah yeah it's been uh actually i saw some moves that i never thought of as uh black on latvian gambling so that's great that's good yeah all right